Hi, and welcome to today's iTree video replay. Today's presentation will be on iTree Eco, and our presenter will be Dave Nowak of the U.S. Forest Service Northern Research Station, located in Syracuse, New York. What Eco is is basically the old U4 program. We re renamed it. It's a ground-based approach to measuring trees or populations of trees and trying to assess ecosystem services. And what it does is it takes the data that you collect on a tree or a population of trees and it brings in the local weather data, the local pollution data, and some other environmental variables from the location that you're at. You have to tell us what city you're in. And then it basically tries to simulate those trees through time. Some of it does, like it does uh, gas exchange on an hourly basis to look at pollution removal and things like this. So that's all the coding behind there. But it tries to simulate uh, the ecosystem services for the tree at the location that you put data in on. So it uses local data that you collect and local data sets that are available within the iTree tool. And it assesses urban forest structure. So basically it tells you about the population, what your species composition is, how many trees you have, their sizes, basic things that you can measure about the population. And then it looks at the various functions or ecosystem services, such as energy conservation, pollution removal, carbon storage, or carbon removal annually, and volatile organic emissions. It ascribes a dollar value to these ecosystem services, and it also looks at various management aspects, such as uh, pest risks, uh, what proportion of your forest is susceptible to Asian longhorn beetle, uh, gypsy moth, emerald ash borer, Dutch elm disease, or they're now. We're currently working, as you know, these last few weeks right now, to expand that database up to about 30 or uh, about 30 or so pests, uh, so you'll have more more of that type of information. It looks at tree health and where the plants come from in the world, and we're also looking at an invasive plant list right now. So that'll be coming up in future versions, but we're adding that to the database. So that's the concept behind the models. You collect data, and it assesses back. So I'm just going to go through briefly the steps, and then I'll show you the program, and then we'll open it up for questions. So if you want to run an eco-analysis, the first question that you have to ask is, where's your study area? So you have to define, is, what population of trees are you looking at? Is it a whole city? Is it a whole region? Is it a state? Is it a backyard? totally up to you. The, the model totally flexible. It can be used pretty much anywhere, but you have to decide where you're going to work and decide on that study area. And that often can be some, one of the more difficult questions because people are, aren't sure what they want to measure, but uh, it's often used at a city level. We've used it at parks. We've done states. It's flexible in that, in that regard. Second step is that once you define your area, you have to answer the question, are you going to count every tree there or are you going to sample to get to the total? Very simple. If it's a small area and you have 10 trees, it's just as easy to count. If it's a large area, you're going to sample, which means you're going to put out random points and only collect data around those points. And that's what the graphic at the right shows is random samples within a city. If you are going to sample, the next question is how many plots do you want to put in and what size should the plots be? This, this graphic shows that if you put more plots in your standard error, which is the bound of certainty, the standard error drops, which means the bound of certainty increases as you increase the number of plots. We typically put in 201 tenth acre plot. A tenth acre plot is a 37.2 foot radius circle, so everything within that circle is measured for the trees. Uh, that, the reason we do 200 tenth acre is about what a crew of two can get done in a summer season of about three months to keep the crews employed. But it's totally up to you. Some cities have done up to 800. You can do different sizes. Each plot does not have to be the same size. I don't know why you would change the sizes, but there are cases when you want to. Um, so you have to decide that issue. Once after that, what data do you want to collect? There's certain core variables you have to collect. You have to tell us the species and diameter of the trees. We prefer to have crown measures taken, crown width, crown height, and condition of the trees. But uh, you can collect distance to buildings, which is needed to run energy. But you can look through the manual. There's all sorts of things. It's up to you. If you don't collect something, you will not get an analysis for it. So if you don't tell us how far the, the tree is from a building, we can't do the energy conservation work on that tree. Uh, but you don't have to collect everything, but you do have to collect a minimum of certain pieces of data. Once you know that, and if, you're, if you are sampling, you can lay points. There's a program within iTree to put the points down in the area for you, and you can transfer those points to Google imagery or to various mapping and tell the crews where to go. It puts a point on the map, and the crews go find it, and they start measuring data. Uh, there's a setup program within the iTree program that just tells the basic information. So you're setting up a basic project within the iTree uh, eco itself. And once you've got all that information set up, 
to go, you can go out in the field, train the crews, and train the crews and collect the data. You can uh, collect on PDAs right now. We're working to change that over so it'll work on uh, mobile applications. Or you can go on a paper form. And then if you do paper form, there's a data entry program I'll show you to put the data in if you, if you go by paper. Uh, slide at the right shows uh, Mickey Merritt actually in Texas. Where the, pot, where the plot falls, the plot falls. Uh, you have to go collect the data there. You're not allowed to move plots around because otherwise you'll end up with a biased sample. After the crews collect the data, if they collect it on PDA, they drop, drop it in the cradle. The data loads automatically or you enter it in on the paper forms. Uh, once the data is entered, then you can start the analysis. Submits to the server. The server gives you the data back within an hour. And there's a series of tables and graphs that I'll show you in the program. And it also has an automatic report generator that gives you a, that you can export to take and customize it however you want. And the hope is that you use the reports to make a difference in the uh, in the work that you're trying to do. So that's a general overview to get you out collecting data. Now I'm just going to show you some of the attributes of the program. This is iTree Eco, and you can you can see it. The first under file, there's new project, open project, various attributes about the project. But I'm going to open a sample project. And there's two types of projects. One is the inventory base. That's if you count every tree, and the second is plot base. I'm going to open an inventory based program first, and then you can see you can enter data or edit data. There's this a sample project for Crawford. And that's the data for the individual trees. If you wanted to add trees in, here's the data entry form. So it's the basic information about the species. You have to enter the species code. If you wanted land use, you can drop the land use type. The height to diameter, the DBH is up to six. Total height, height to live top, height to the base of the crown, to the two crown width, percent of the crown missing, dieback, and crown light exposure, which is the number of sides that it, the plant's in competition with. And if you have distance and direction to build it, oh, it doesn't run on this one here. So that's the data entry. Shows you the data. And then for tables, what you can see is the individual tree characteristics that you put into the model after it's run will be reported back for each individual tree and then the total for the population. And you can export it as a PDF, a rich text format, or a common delimited file. You can convert between metric outputs or English outputs. And then there's a table on individual pollution effects, too. Same type of thing, metric or English. So basically, it's a calculator for those trees that you put into the model. The other way you can go is plot-based inventory projects. With then this, what this does, it takes your plots and tries to estimate up to the population totals. I'm going to the data entry here. Again, you can add plot information. Same type of thing, general plot information on this field. If this, if you didn't collect it on the PDA, you can enter your shrub data here or your tree information for everything on that plot. And there are here under tools, here's the paper form for the inventory. If you were going to collect in paper, I'll show you what it looks like. You can see that's where you type the, or write the information in the field on this form, and then you would go to the data entry program and just type the data over into the program itself. And the same here for the, the um, plot data collection program, where you can sketch the plot, enter reference data, enter the land uses, the ground covers, the shrubs, and here's the tree form for the plot. So it's set up to either go paper or plastic. For reports, there's uh, many standard charts. We're working to convert the inventory to produce more charts, but right now it's just the simple outputs that I showed you before. You can pick the standard reports you want, you can, or the charts. You can see here's tree density by land use type. And again, you can export that if you wanted to, same type of thing I showed you before. What's new under version 4, we have all these standard charts. This one's pretty cool. Uh, this is the hourly pollution removal by trees. And actually, you can... You can pick the pollutant you want up here on the top. There's carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, PM10, or sulfur. I'll just pick ozone. But you can also pick what you want to graph here. This is the concentration of ozone for that study area. This is Lake uh, Forest Park. 
You can look at the PM uh, parts per million concentrations or in micrograms per cubic meter. You can look at uh, the sunlight, which is the, the photosynthetic, photosynthetically active radiation. You can see the sunlight during the year. Uh, temperature from the weather file that was brought in, or temperature in Kelvin. Air quality improvement, the percent of air quality improvement based on the boundary layer heights from the canopy that you have. And you can see in this graphic as you move into the in-leaf season how the percent air quality improves because the trees are in leaf. The pollution removal. Again, you can see when the trees come into leaf around late March, you start getting increased pollution removal. Uh, air quality improvement per unit of canopy cover and transpiration, which is the water use. But it's also neat, you can then zoom in. That's for the whole year. You can pick a sliding scale and zoom into a certain area and see the patterns for the days. So there's a lot more capabilities now in this version 4 than we had in version 3 on reporting on the input data that's brought into the program from the weather and the pollution. You also have a series of tables. There's many standard tables you can you can uh, pick. Here's percent of trees by condition class. Again, all those tables you can read, and again, you can then export them as a rich text format, common delimited, however you want to do that, and use that export into an Excel spreadsheet and do your own calculations. The written report. This would produce an automatic report generator. All you have to do is put in for whatever city you're doing the population because it has to do some per capita estimates, and we don't know the population for your area because it might not be a city. It might just be part of a city or a, a state. And you can look to the census on the, on the link there. And this might take a second, but it will produce an automatic report for you. This could just be my system. There you go. And you can see this is what this is what you can export then. And you can see that it, it's a standard report that we have with many of the graphics already included and the text. But then you can customize this as you want after you export it. Model processing notes is in case it, when, it, when you make the run to the server, it'll show you if you have any issues. We have no control right now. In the past, the data ran through us. Now with version 4, it goes right to a server. You download it. It runs it on the server and gives it back to you. So there's no one looking at it except for you. So if you have um, something wrong with it, check those model processing notes. It'll tell you if an error is a really bad error. It won't run. But hopefully that won't happen because there's a lot of checks on the data input structure. If you've entered the data in, bad data can't get through. But there are things that pop up just so you know what's going on there. It'll show you. It's a very quick turnaround too, right, Dave? Yeah, it's less. What is it working about less than an hour, right? Yep. Yeah, so it just depends on the queue if someone gets ahead of you, because we only have one server running, so if someone's ahead of you, it'll run theirs first and then yours. In the past, it took up to two weeks for, two, two to four weeks for U.S. runs, international. We have to run those by hand still, because there's a lot of issues with international data that we have to check and clean up by hand. The key is you've got to make sure that, you know, no one's looking at this, so it's the old garbage in, garbage out. If you put bad data in, the computer's not going to know that. So if you call a Norway maple a Norway spruce, the computer's going to think it's a Norway spruce. And that happens sometimes. People type the wrong codes in. So be sure to check the numbers over. Um, Mike, anything else for Scott I should show? There's the manual online. You can check species codes there under the help. Check for updates. If there's any issues, you can report a bug to us. Thanks for joining us for the iTree Eco presentation. For more information on the iTree software, please visit www.itreetools.org.